We will call to order the uh, meeting for the Ellisville Redevelopment Committee uh, for Monday, November 25th, 2024. Is it the president's prayer? It's the president or someone else on the committee. I'm happy to pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for these people, this roof over our head. Uh, thank you for our health, your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. We ask that you help others see your glory through our actions and help us uh, guide our actions to the best for the community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now you said William Ellis, and he's not responded. But if he responds, then I'll give you a DTA. Okay. All right. So the next would be. Uh, oh, do we do roll call? Yes. Okay. Um, William Ellis. Tom Corman. Here. Dr. Hash. Here. Trevor Sager. Here. Carl Thurman. Here. I always had a question. Do I need to um, do a roll call for the non-voting member also, um, for the I, record? I don't think it would hurt just for the record. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the current one is Dana Kerr. Okay. Has Dana formally submitted his resignation? Mm -mm. I'll send him an email. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> All righty. We good on that? So the next would be the approval of the last month's no, uh, minutes from 10-28-2024. I know we've passed that around here. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Now you can do this one of two ways going forward. You can ask if there's anyone. Dar can you help me with this? Like, Instead of doing a roll call for the minutes. Um, <clears throat> Isn't it all in favor, aye. I think that's fine for the minutes. Okay. Sounds good. All in favor? If you do that for every petition, it has to be a roll call. Okay. So I think for the minutes, that's fine. Okay. okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, and next on the agenda is discussion for the establishment of the West Side and Downtown TIF. We're going to do that before. Right. Right. Oh, we're gonna, here. Okay, perfect. okay. Perfect timing. I would say Sounds great. Then we can start with the meeting schedule for 2024. Welcome, senior. Sorry. Yeah, oh, no worries. My delay. Yeah. And is this still doing the same same program or with uh, a working session every other time? So we're going every two weeks versus once a month? I was a little unclear on how we wanted to proceed with that because the problem with doing the work sessions would be you can't vote on anything. So I didn't know how fast certain things needed to go. Here, here's my suggestion with the, the commission's approval is that we play it by ear on the work session. Like, uh, for example, I would suggest that at the next meeting, December 9th, it be a regular meeting and not a work session because my hope is that uh, we will have ready the declaratory resolution, then proposed um, economic development plans for the two economic development districts because we're running out of time. We have to have that passed before the end of the year for both of those districts. So I would suggest that you take the work sessions um, on a case-by-case -case basis. But for the next meeting, I would suggest that be a regular meeting. So that brings up a good point. Do we, because <clears throat> we talked about doing this on the same night as town council, two Mondays a month, are we wanting to keep are we just wanting to just make it a flat general meeting, regular meeting, I should say, on the same two Mondays instead of this work session thing? What are we thinking on that? I would think just make it a regular meeting, and then we can, at the end, as an example, at the end of the December 9th meeting, if we... It doesn't look like there's anything coming down the pike to vote on, but we need stuff to discuss to 
to get more information on than make the, you know, as an example of December 23rd meeting or work session. I guess my thought too, I agree, is, you know, if we publish this as two meetings a month, two Mondays a month, if there's something not coming down the pike, is that something that we'll have to make an announcement for canceling meetings if there's nothing to discuss? I think as a courtesy to the public, you should, but I think the commission can be like the planning commission, for example. If there's no business, you don't have to have a meeting. But yes, as a courtesy to the public, I think you should announce that we will not have a meeting next month or the, on the next rotation because there's no new business or something okay. to that effect. Right. I'm good with that. Yeah, any of these meetings that the commission decides as far as changing anything, because this will go before the town council to also approve. I would make sure that it was advertised in the appropriate amount of time for the open door law. And that re that kind of brings up my next question. What is the appropriate amount of time for a cancellation due to lack of business? Like what's the minimum that we have to notify the 48 public? hours, correct? 48 hours minimum, but I think probably you'll know probably a week or even two right. weeks in advance whether or not we have anything going. I'm good with that. And we could probably decide at the end of the meeting we're having, correct, whether there's something else needs to be done. Well, I, on some, yes, but I think as we get further into it, maybe not, because there may be th things that pop up that Mike or Denise need us to make decisions on. Yeah. But that, so I wouldn't necessarily want to, you know, say there will be nothing, but I, I would say a week beforehand we would need, we would know, we'd yeah. have clarity. But as we start having construction and we start having to decide what we're going to be spending the money on, then I'm sure we're going to be meeting more often. So for next year then, are we going to leave them, are we going to leave them rotated or are we going to leave them all as normal meetings? No working meetings, even. I said make them regular, right? Yeah, if you want to make a formal motion of that, I'll second that. Yeah. Yeah, because we need to change that from the October meeting, right? Because weren't we taught in the October meeting did we make it official that we were doing the first one a work session, second one a regular meeting? No, and only because, so in order to do the annual dates, like the plan commission and the parks has to go before the town council to approve them all together. Okay. Um, and the council can make any changes there, is my understanding. So as the schedule reads now, we're good with just leaving it that way because the dates are locked in, right. locked in quote unquote. Oh, oh I'm sorry. But these haven't <laughs> been approved by the council yet, so. Sorry, and they're not designated as work sessions or um, right. actual meetings. This just, way gives us okay. flexibility. Just correct? the dates. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. I thought they were designated as one or the other. So we can leave it then. I think I we'll do that to the end of the year. Designated on, as, at, at first with alternating work sessions and meeting dates. But I think because something that I heard from Darla or Mike made me question that and with getting things passed before the end of the year if we went on that schedule then the next one would be a work session which would would put us behind right okay do we want to take a vote on the approval yeah to yeah. present to council yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the meeting schedule for 2025 to present to the town council. Doc Sefton. William Ellis. Yes. Tom Corman. Yes. Dr. Hash. Yes. Carl Thurman. Yes. Trevor Shager. Yes. Motion passes. <coughs> All right. So the next thing would be the uh, RDC policy for public comment and the electronic meeting policy. And I think we're going to stick with the the guideline based on the town council, is that correct? Well, what I have provided to you on the uh, public comment policy is taken strictly, uh, borrowed, if I will, from the town council policy. So that was one that I gave you. The other document that I gave you was an electronic meeting policy, and I have to apologize because I gave you the wrong cite to the wrong statute. I gave you a copy of 36-7-14.5-9.5, which is for redevelopment authorities, not redevelopment commissions. Redevelopment authorities are under 36-7-14.5. Redevelopment commissions are under 36-7-14. So if you want to have an electronic meeting policy, you will need to 
follow the same policy that the town council and planning commission do, and I gave everybody a copy of that statute. Can I ask for the what's the difference between a commission and authority? Sure. The redevelopment commission um, is the um, they're formulated to eliminate blight and create new development. A redevelopment authority is a separate body and it finances projects for the redevelopment commission. It's a three-member board, but it's a totally oh, different good. Like it's animal. Okay. So maybe one day as Ellisville grows, you'll have a redevelopment authority that uh, finances projects for the commission, but it's a totally different animal and I gave you the wrong statute and I should have recognized it because I thought it was a pretty generous electronic meeting policy <laughs> in the sense that um, you didn't have to show up but one meeting a year, so that should have been my cue. But in any event, if you want an electronic meetings policy, you have to go by the statute that I put in front of you, and you do have to um, pass or agree to pass a policy, and um, that statute tells you all the ins and outs and the limitations on that electronic meeting policy. So 50% of the members have to be physically present, and any member cannot attend more than 50% of the meetings by electronic communication, unless you come under one of the um, exceptions like military service, illness, death of a relative, emergency, something like that. So that's the policy you're going to have to adopt if you want to adopt the meeting policy for electronic meetings. Any concerns? Sounds, sounds fair to me. I mean, if that's. Too. We don't need to vote on it then tonight. No, yeah, because I'll put it in a resolution. If I have a consensus that that is acceptable, I will put that in a resolution or um, some other format for you to approve at the next meeting. So that's the electronic meeting policy. What are the commission's thoughts on the public comment policy? I think, Will, you had some good ideas on that last time about it. About response time, if you want to repeat that. I've slept a couple times since then, but uh, I think what was it, uh, three minutes total? That was that is what we generally for the council. But I think that we need the the commission being us can you know waive that or extend it if it's an ongoing legitimate conversation. But that will limit people just getting up there at event, which is is fine. But if there's questions asked, we would want to be able to respond. So we could wait that three minute time so they can, we can have a conversation if we feel needed to. So the general rule would be three minutes for comment. I would think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and I think we'd said something that if we ask a question back, then they get time to respond to that question. Yeah, also. and that was, Follow I don't, up. I don't know if we can, if we want to micromanage that and put that into um, a policy, but I think that we could, if I'm not mistaken, Darla, that if we do want to ask more questions and um, with the deference of the rest of the council say, do, do you mind if I ask more questions? And that, that we can let the conversation go. And, but still, they, their response could be no more than, we don't want another, if the question's asked were, you know, uh, hypothetically, uh, trying to think of a question that could be asked that we would, I don't know, what, what we don't want is what they've said repeated again. And again, we'd want a direct answer to what we're asking for the question. I would not know how to put that in a policy. I think that just needs to be a situational. Thing. What we don't want is any in the policy preventing us from asking questions or the people talking to us, us addressing them. Because I think there'll be some times we'll want to know information on what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So three minute, I think that's fine. I think just the three minutes because, Darrell, we can be flexible with that as a board, right? If, yes. Okay. So, I mean, it doesn't mean this is the hard pass rule we have to only have. No, I have some, yeah, I have some language in there that states that the council by, or the commission by motion to begin can increase or reduce the time limit depending on okay. what type of project is before you and what sort of audience Okay, good. Here, here's a good example. Somebody talking about flooding. Yeah, they're talking about all the flooding issues. 
we may not be aware of that because and that really is not for us but just but then we may want to say what other street did we notice flat you know what are we doing talking to some of the other supervisors to find out that and then they can say well we've done that you know we don't just we want their concerns addressed we don't just want them to be heard and do a check mark to say right. oh we had public comment because public comment in spirit should be the goal should be public buy-in not just to let them say their piece and for us to dismiss them and make the decision right. anyway agreed and then again uh, open discussion for the based on their yeah based on it, sometimes yeah. there's no no questions asked there's nothing that needs to be discussed we just want to hear their comments and that we're good with that mm -hmm. then other times i think as long as we have a policy we all want to be reasonable and would like to hear Correct. what we can to make sure we do the best for the community. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. I agree. So I, I think that's I think that's good too. And then back to the electronic meeting policy. Uh, my curious my curious on that would be, is this a, just a basic policy with enforcement or without? My my thought is, you know, it's for some reason somebody just doesn't show up. Uh, you know, what, what does the does it affect the rest of us to be able to do our business? Uh, no, as long as we have a quorum. Which is three. Three. Yeah, fine. Okay. Okay. And that would lead me to another thing that I was wanting to know if we want to have a policy on is an attendance policy. Because what we don't want to happen is people not showing up to meetings when there's a tough vote just to avoid making a decision. And again, I'm not talking about people necessarily on the board now, but could be on the board in the future. So, I mean, I, I would think that, I mean, just for lenient because we all do have lives and things come up but you have to attend at least 50 percent of the voting um meetings a year and and cast votes otherwise it's recommended to the council a replacement needs made well one way uh, something you could add to your electronic meeting policy is add a requirement that unless it's an emergency or something comes up at the last minute that um the person who anticipates being absent, notify the president, say, I don't know, a week before the meeting or something, just so we know who's on Zoom and who's in, uh, going to be in chambers, because it may matter depending on what you're voting on. That's true. Um, probably not so much for a redevelopment commission as for town council, but it might matter what you're voting on, whether or not that person can actually participate by Zoom and vote. So just as a, a, a courtesy, you could um, add some language to the policy requiring I would, I would definitely <clears throat> like that. It'd be, yeah, it'd be nice to know right. what, what we're working with. Yeah. And I mean, we can address it later if we have people. I just, again, I don't want the, it's kind of a, a weird version of the heckler's veto that you can stop business of an uh, organization by not providing a quorum. And I don't want that to, to happen. Okay. Fair. Um, any comments on either of those? Um, yeah, I, I, as far as the attendance thing, like I want to tread tread lightly on that. Um, the notification thing, in theory, I think sounds good, but for somebody who can very frequently get called out for an emergency, yeah, I get it. You, I may not be here, and I'm, yeah. I just something I can't do. For you, so. and that, that's all, that, that's why the threshold I was saying fifty percent. I mean, you you'll, but half I know. I'm trying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think half of my shifts are nighttime, so I'm trying. Yeah. Well, it, if I might it. say, um, I, it's not like the town board. They serve a pleasure. This board serves a pleasure of the town board, so they can be dismissed. Okay. Right. Are there, so there's no terms for us then. We could be. It serves at the pleasure of the. Well, you. I think you need year. to have one year terms. One year. Right. But. Yes, um, the town council can dismiss any redevelopment commission member for any reason or no reason. So. And we have that check and balance. So if any of you go rogue. Yeah. That's assuming the town council has a quorum to do that. Well, I think that that meeting <laughs> policy also said if there's emergencies or whatnot. Yeah. Those, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I get it because right. I, I understand being on right. call. Yeah, and yeah. and that, that, that happens. Yeah. I don't think we'll have an issue with, with this board. No. I mean, it's just as rotation comes around. Right. I'm, I'm, I try to look at what could go wrong, 
What have I seen other places in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years? We want to kind of, we don't want to be, look like we're playing catch up and, oh, why didn't we see that coming when we do? <laughs> so some guidelines. No, I, I agree. And it's, it's not just for us. It's, it's to kind of establish some precedents for what, what happens next. Correct. So the next group doesn't have to go through the same Bingo. thing that we're going through now. Yeah. Decision making. Um, so that leads us, uh, any, any more on the um, meeting policy or the public comment? No? So that leads us to, do we have our drawings? Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks to Denise, she got it last minute, and we just got the information today, so she just got it last minute. And I talked to her like four minutes ago and said, can you put this out for the music? So thank you, Denise. Thank you, yep, thank you, Denise. And hopefully these are better than the last drawings. Did you make those last ones, Mike? Was, were they handwritten on it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be me. Sometimes you get them on drywall, so it's all drywall. Right, yeah. Um so uh, can you can those be overlaid to like an aerial map? Because those aren't going to do us any good. Well that's I mean I give him aerial maps when I send them to him. Yeah, go ahead and let that guy see what I can do. I mean, we could probably you, you drew some maps yourself, right? And you could highlight them. We could use those. Was that the ones was that the ones we had two weeks ago? Because there were some questions on those that, yeah. I mean, we can start talking about it now, but the downtown tip is very simple to um, remember. It's between the splits, basically, give or take 500 feet, mm -hmm. and two blocks off the west boundary of 46 East. South boundary of 46 east and the north boundary of 46 west, two blocks off. And it includes the road on the outer um, perimeter. So it doesn't stop at the, for instance, if the, we were in the TIF district and, and it went out to the, this highway here, it goes to the other side of the highway, right. just so you know. And that was purposeful because those roads might be in play for That's the downtown tip. The downtown tip, chip tip, yeah, that's the downtown tip. Okay. Um, until um, we can get something up on the map, I mean, just to start the um, conversation, Starnes Road, there we go. So. Um, I don't know where he, what he told him the plan. Okay, well, I, I can tell you. Um, so, um, Reeves, Reeves Road from Starnes to Sycamore Drive is the south boundary. And the south boundary. Uh, Mississippi. Where's the town we're in on 45 degree angle? Um, so um, it includes Reeves Road from Starnes to Sycamore Drive. Mm -hmm. Starnes from Reeves Road to Flatwoods. Along Flatwoods, and it does a couple of turns because of the boundary of the town and ends up on Chafin Chapel, goes along the backside of Chafin Chapel where uh, Smithville owns property and it follows their, prop their north property line back to 46. And then from there, um, it uh, crosses behind Linton Estates and goes back to Sycamore Drive. So that so that one the west side one is on both sides of forty six. It is. Yeah. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out is the how expansive. And on Storm, Starnes Road at Flatwoods, where the Barber property um, 
straddle both sides of uh, Starnes Road, all the um, Umberger property is part of that pit as well. And so the, the, um, the, sorry, direction. the south side of Starnes Road, all the way to Flatwoods Park, the, the county owned, mm -hmm. it, it extends all the way to that park along Flatwoods. And so these are just the initial two proposals that we need to uh, agree on. And we did decide these are things that we, if we want to do another one, we have to start a brand new TIF or we can expand these TIFs. Uh, you, you can expand, you can modify. Okay. But you're going to have to go through the, the similar process that you're going through now in terms of notification. And right, but we, we need to approve these to at least get something in the yes, books and get, get, us, get us a base to start yes. with. And then we can modify based on that, based off of... Yes, and you um, can modify the plan and take parcels out and start whole new projects mm -hmm. with it. Um, so I think it's, it's pretty wide open as that you're going to have to go through this process again. And, and Once we start this in the TIF, it's it's in the TIF. We don't have to do this every year, modify it. Or no, it's in the TIF. Yeah, yeah. If you increase it, help me out yes. here, Darla. If you increase the area, say you expand beyond it, mm -hmm. yes. the new part of the TIF, it starts a new, I mean, it, it, you know, when you start a TIF, you have a base AB that's already there, and anything, any improvements that the assessed value goes up, that's when the TIF kicks in. Right. So in the new TIF, it would not be subject to the old TIF start date. It would be the start date Later of start. new area of TIF uh -huh. for new AB. So I'm, I'm almost sure I'm right. That's fine. That's we have okay. a legal yeah. description that yep. we can give them, and um, I haven't looked at it, I, and I can't read it up there, but this is, for all intent and purposes, what Denise just drawn, this is the intent of the TIF, and the legal description basically says what I told you. It's not a legal description, it's a, this is a legal I, I don't know what to call it. an engineer narrative of the area. Okay. Yeah, which doesn't mean a lot to me. That That's why I, I like, I appreciate that drawing. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Mike, and, or Denise and uh, Darla, so let's say we add more onto the TIF through, you know, people annex into us, whatever. And are you saying the whole TIF AV value then is reset to that new date, or just the, the area we've added on? Just the area starts its own AV floor. floor yeah. Okay, okay. I was worried it would. No, it, does, was, it doesn't affect because I was going to say or how it grows. Okay. Or the the end date of the tip either. So like one part of the tip, if we add on another add on, the main tip. Would expire 20 years and the other tip would be 20 years from implementation, correct? Yes, I think okay. it's 25. Yes. Or 25, yes. And, and, and I can't answer whether the tip money can migrate from one place. You know, okay. if you expand it, I, I don't know that the new tip area, say it's a lot smaller, that smaller area, but the larger tip can migrate some money. Do you know that? I don't. That's a Baker Tilly question because one of the things that Baker Tilly has to help us do eventually is they have to um, prepare a um, report um, discussing the financial impact on the um, designation of the economic development area. So they're going to have to do that every time, I think, that you modify the area or, okay. or add an area. So. Uh. We might be able, um, do you know, Clark, the answer to the migration of one tip to the other and get, if it's expanded, if the monies can migrate back and forth? I, I do not know that. Yeah. I mean, it's a good That's question, but um, anyway, I'll find out for the next meeting. But I do anticipate that there'll be a meeting where we ask for the tip to be expanded. I have a 
a really quick question. Who's our contact for Baker Tilly specifically? Matt for Matt it is Matt. Matt. Okay. And, and then, so when appropriate, one of us, we may have you be, um, you know, have you copy through some of the language. And it, he's always forward with the information. So but we'll make sure that starts happening. And that's this Matt? Edward Lee. Okay. He's with Baker Tilly. He's our. Mr. President, for minutes purposes, I'd like to point out that Mike had asked Clark Reiner from the Bloomington Economic Development Corporation, who was in the audience, that question. So that way, if, because it, we, we weren't up at the podium. So, okay. so if the public's watching this, well, I got so they you. know who he was <laughs> I got you. asking the question and did not know. So anybody from the audience that's going to answer a question needs to theoretically come up and answer it at the, the podium? I would think, uh, yes. Okay. Do you want to see the map of the downtown area, or is it pretty? No, the downtown one's pr pretty simple. Yeah, unless anybody else wants to see I'd it. Like to see I'd like to see it. Downtown map looks like. I that. would too. Can you draw that one? <laughs> you did great on the other one. Yeah, I, I think we need like a 100-inch TV for my eyes. Well, I mean, while we're waiting for yeah. it to draw. I don't, I don't know if it's the rest of you guys, but I'm thinking. <laughs> Shazam. Can you point out some, you know, landmarks of, so we know what we're looking at? Um, let's see. So, um, Sale Street, North Sale Street's here, and um, it's where the Heritage Center is, and um, Carl's Business, and and all the downtown shops, and then um, it encompasses a trail. And um, wanted to make sure to include the creek in that tip. And then it goes over across North Sale, and there's some apartments and some uh, state property there. And then it goes all the way um, to Matthews. And then um, it's just a discussion, one to start your discussion purposes. And then it goes down and encompasses um, the Village Inn and all those buildings. The old location of the Village Inn, yeah. not the new one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My concern is still with this, that we've got the north side of Association Street, a lot of residential, and a lot of our ones in Vine Street. And I don't know if... I mean, I know legally we can do it, but do we want to res do a residential tip also? I don't see the purpose. It's not a residential tip. This would be a commercial tip. Right, but there's residential properties in that. And they, as I understand it, they won't be affected. The only way they'd be affected is if somebody bought them and wanted to keep developed commercial sort. I mean, but I guess, from, and this is, I'm putting on the hat from what the school people Will that AV pass to the school then? We would um, need to figure that out we, if we can't. Yeah, and we can pass up to 15% of what the commercial is uh, And somebody needs to double check me on this. But as I understand it, we can pass on 15% of the TIF money to, to the school. Okay, well, I was just talking about just the TIF monies of the growth in residential assessments in those areas. But as a commercial tip, I think the residential areas would not be, the school would not be affected at all. Yeah, I'm, if you I'm could. Almost, I'm almost. I, I, that, if that would be great. Because then Carl, your house is in there too, why, isn't it? And that's, <laughs> what, that's why it's important that we can develop a tip that passes the money through right. to, to the school. Exactly. So they're not affected. Dan would have been getting that point. <laughs> he would have said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and all these tips are within the town of Ellsville, correct? Yes. And I guess that's where 
I, I'm looking for an awesome map that'll show me the uh, the parameters of the town of Ellettsville with these other things. I mean, it, it, th those are all questions I wonder about: is you know when where they stop and where they start. Uh, you know, uh, how do we make the decision on uh, uh, where to start one, where to stop one, and and why? Um, I, like I said, I, I assume this is because that's where the town. So why why these things don't go further down? 46 with all the construction and different things would be going up and down. <coughs> well, 46. Um, you got to start, stop and start somewhere. This is just a suggestion. Okay. And um, there, we, we were, the downtown tip is to, um, you know, I mean, some of the stuff we talked about downtown was new sidewalks, aesthetic improvements, streetscapes. We may want, we may I don't think it is. We may want to talk about expanding it a little. That's why we're talking. Right. Yeah. I mean, the question you asked is perfect. What do you guys want? We, we, we started the process by saying, we, we give you a target. Now, we need for you guys to decide what to do. I, 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 I want you to understand that we just... It's a starting place. I, I get that. Okay. And I guess that's some of my questions is, you know, it is, you know, I, from, uh, you know, uh, uh, being new to the development committee, I, I, I want us to develop it, all we can, uh, you know, and, and not shortchange ourselves by having it too small and down the road realize we could have brought in other uh, other projects. But I don't, uh, honestly, for me, uh, it's, it's, it's my mind ignorance. I don't even know what the actual outlines are of the township so I could even look at that and decide whether we're where we need to be or we need to expand left, right, north, south, yeah. And, and I'll say on the west side tip, it's pretty easily defined mm -hmm. based on what's going on and where our town limits are. Downtown is subjective and you, you, you can go make it expand, you know, any way you want. And um, so uh, maybe we want to go all the way to hard space, say, so we could um, use some of the money for inside the Stewart Park. It seems like a good idea to me now. And I would just throw out there that going down Park Street, Hart Street, and capturing the um, baseball fields too, that that's something that. Well, that's township trustee property. Right, but wouldn't. But it would probably be good to be in it because then you can. Correct. Be like that's what I'm saying. I mean, well, how do you guys feel about that? Because it's not just about what tax revenue is getting, yeah. but what we're what we could use that revenue for has got to be in the right the tip. So, so take it to Hart Street. Yeah, I think expand it on up to Hart Street. Yeah, but how, also how, go ahead. How far up forty six? For the TIF in the area that I went around is, I want to create a riverfront district in that area, and we need to have a TIF first. You could still do the riverfront though, because it's still extended to Hart Street, right? Correct. Yeah. Do we have to have a TIF to do the riverfront? Mm-hmm. Okay. The, if we didn't have a TIF, there's no chance of a, of getting the permits like we were talking about. And yeah. Last year I went to a conference. About it. So step they one said is we getting have to have a tip. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's a great idea, and I love the Hart Street. I think. Mm -hmm. Why not? I mean. But do you want? Isn't isn't it Park? Yeah, Park Street. Do we want to also <clears throat> go up that little dog leg with the fields and the other park too? Yeah. Can we see it on Elevate, Denise? Well, does anybody know, is the property that Martin owns 
inside your town? It is. Yes, it is. Okay. So the high, all the different colors are our zoning, and that also outlines our borders when you were asking. So anyway, this is Hart Straight Road. Uh, but you may want to, just from the peanut gallery back here, you may want to look at some undeveloped commercial around the downtown, even to the east of Hart Strait, because if you're just picking up Campbell's Park, all of these, there's no revenue to be had there to get your tip funds. Would, to would you like to speak at the, the mic? I think we're, we're talking no, about that, that way it's on our minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. He knows the rules. I know the rules. You look uh, comfortable where you were, though. You don't want to mess around. Right. Uh, what I was saying is we may want to look a little more east of Hart Strait with some of these undeveloped plots, uh, because if we just pick up Stewart Park, Campbell's Park, things like that, you're not gaining any revenue from those. There's no tax money to be gained, so you can't fund <laughs> Denise's projects. That so we true. may want to look at some of those other areas to capture it to help take care of her projects. Well, the reason I was saying capture those is the money from the other area. For us to spend it in the TIF, it has to be in the TIF. So we understand we're not going to be capturing revenue from there, but we want to spend money in that area. So Sure. But And then his thought is the, the idea of opening it further so that when those areas are improved, you can actually get some TIF money and spend it. In on your area. project, so it's yeah. actually the best of both worlds. So yes. you're able to spend I have no it disagreement with in that. your spot, and those areas could potentially, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a few lots um, east of 46, you know, that's relatively close, but just a thought. Yeah, thank you. Would this have to go? Nice one. I Charlie, what, what's the, what are the ramifications if we make, if we err one way or the other? If we err too large, you know, because yeah. I, I like grandiose. I like the idea of, well, why just think about working on this area and making it really cool when we can make it all really cool eventually, right? Uh, and I know we can expand them down the road, but what, what, what happens if we make it, is there, are there any negatives to making it larger and then down the road deciding we could cut it down if we need to versus... Is. And we, but we don't have a lot of time, so would it be appropriate to say yes to this now and then expand them? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of duplicate work to some point, but you know, this this is all we've never been here before, so it gets a starting point for 2024. For expediency, I think Darla likes to have something, right? I see smoke come out of yours when we start talking about changing it. And then you look over here, and I got the same thing back. I'm thinking, I get it, because if we change this now, then it's going to have to go back to the other people to change it. Yeah, I would just, yeah. um, because you, unless you want to have a special meeting around Christmas, mm. um, I would rather not be hashing out boundaries and parcel numbers and maps too late in the year, because you've got two more meetings. And we could also do, at the first meeting in January, we could add these other areas we're talking about adding. Well, I don't, I'm not sure it's that simple. I think once you start this process, it goes to the planning commission and the council and comes back to you for public hearing. I think if you start adding to it, you're gonna have to start over. Does that make sense? Yeah. In other words, I don't think you can pass the resolution and then come back in January and amend it. Um, 
Well, what do you do to expand it in the process? Yeah, there is. But I, I, I don't think you can crisscross and uh, you know, kind of like you know, While it's in motion? Yeah, I don't think you can do that. I think once you've got the resolution done and it goes to the plan commission, it goes to council, then it comes back to you. Um, I'm not sure how much you can tinker with it at that point. I think you're going to have to start the process over, in other words. I mean, I'm all in favor of making the changes we talked about tonight. To Hart Street? Mm hmm. And and that, and what that Chief Patton had said. Yeah, that shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, you guys feel, how do you feel about the, the softball fields too, the baseball fields? And the parks yeah. too. So you're just gonna follow, I'm just kind of trying to track the north-south here as it's going from west to east. Can you going east, we line? would take a left at park, go that down to See Hart straight there. Yeah, park and then go turtle back to um, uh, Hart straight, which would reconnect with 46. Anything up, are you going any, anywhere up north to 46? Are you going, is Road Leverage Park to the east? Um, I don't know of anything up there on the north side. It is in it. What was the question? Is Roy Leverage property? Yeah, oh. it's some pretty valuable property though. That no, it's not in the. the it seems like we would want that in. Where's that at? Um, coming to town, Mr. Split going west and just past the church where Texas two seventy nine was. Uh huh. Um, that next. Large property um, to the right that goes way back up the valley, yeah. all the way. It, it kind of gets in behind. What's the ne name of that addition back there? Kelly Heights. Kelly Heights and what's the what do they call that other place? You got me there. Pennington Park. Pennington Park. Thank you. Yeah, so it's right in there. It's probably. I mean, it's. We'd probably it's, want that. We we probably want yeah. that. And, you know, because I think this is on TV, so it does not affect the ability for people to not do anything with their property or to do anything with their property. It does not affect that. The TIF only means that any AV increase by development, the town is able to utilize those monies inside the TIF area. So yeah. it could actually help with a development if somebody wanted to to do something with the property. It's not more taxes on right. the, yeah, the property. Right, yeah, it has not, this is really just where the taxes go, nothing to do with how much taxes are collected from the individuals. That's not gonna change. Or what they can do or not do with their land. That's right. correct. Yeah. That's right. nice to, nice right. to know. Right, it's not the intent no. at this juncture. So do we have a, uh, a, a, or you want to make a motion or something to change some boundaries and then we can have this solidified and approve it and move on? Because I, I think uh, other than making those few changes you're talking about, I think we're okay as a group to go ahead and approve it and move it forward. I'd like to get those boundaries changed yes. now if we could. So how much of a problem is that going to be for you, Denise and Mike? Personally? Well, Mike, could I ask a question? Darla, would you? Are you, what about the west side? If if you're good, would you want to do one now and wait till the next meeting to do the other, or do you want to do them both at the same time? I'm asking you that. I'd like to do them both, and when we, we have the issues on file before we have meetings passed before the end of the year. And you're good with the next meeting? Yes, as long as I've got what I need in terms of boundaries, parcel numbers, and the map description. Well, can we decide tonight and? have the map later or do they need to vote on a map? I think if if there's a a vote to include certain areas, that's fine. And then we can go do the map and make that part of the declaratory resolution and economic okay. development plan for the next meeting if that's what you're asking, yes. The west side were maxed out, right? As far as Ellisville town limits, 
do we go? Do we push any further west and that? that no, it, it, the town limits. Does. Right. So west side. I'm speaking for myself here. I'm fine with the west side too. Uh, me too. Okay. Agreed. Agreed. Now, just to complicate it, you could take the south boundary at Reeves Road, and there's some properties. Well, they're not in town, so yeah. Right. yeah okay, we're good. Yep. Mm -hmm. So let's work on the it's river downtown. district too. Right, and so yeah, I'm. So, Darla, you'd rather have us, as I'm trying to be clear, decide where our boundaries are for the downtown TIF, and get all that motion, so well, we can. Or get them close. So at least at the next meeting, if it's not exactly right, you still have one more meeting to, to fix that. If that makes sense. Yes. So. I would think it would, I, I don't know from a financial standpoint, you know better than I do, but to change the, some of the parameters on, on the way it's laid out, <coughs> to change them a certain amount versus going further is gonna cost the same. I, I'm trying to be cost effective for what we're doing too. And if, if, it's, if it's gonna be cheaper just to, if you guys have an idea and smarter, one, one, one step to go ahead and make those boundaries all the way where you're talking about, William, I think that's, Smarter than doing it and then and next year doing it again and having to pay for it all a second time. We would have to pay for it all a second time if we add it on to that next year after these are passed. Let's say in June we decide to, we just keep the boundaries as we saw today. But then in, I'm just throwing up June, we decide to go ahead and expand that to Hart Street and Park Street and that. We would have to pay again for another Baker and Tilly, another, they'd have to reconfigure the tip. Finances. Well, right. yes, you're going to have to at some point if you make changes, you're going to have to have prepare have big utility prepare financial impact statements. So I guess to get back to Dr. Cash's question, I guess, and big utility can tell me I'm wrong about this. I guess I would kind of prefer that you go big now and then it can always be scaled back later, maybe because not to throw a monkey wrench in it, but under the Indiana Code, once the Redevelopment Commission passes the plan and the declaratory resolution. It goes to the plan commission, and the plan commission can tinker with it a little bit. They can decide, they can approve it or disapprove it, and then it could come back to you to amend or develop, to amend or modify the resolution and proposed plan in order to confirm to the requirements of the plan commission. So if the plan commission has an issue with it, it's going to come back to you. So it might be better to make the area a little larger, and then if for some reason, for example, the plan commission So to try to wrap our heads around this, we would utilize the existing map proposal and include all of the property Ellettsville owns up to and past Hard Strait, follow a line that resembles the old railroad bed along behind Benders, include the Roy Weaver property and also include the Richland Township trustee property that extends along Park Street to Chester Drive. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. sounds exactly right. Yeah. With adding those on, is that gonna to cause too much a delay in getting it ready for the plan commission no. in December? I'll just get the maps ready. It's not going to go before the Planning Commission in December. Uh -huh. It's not going to go to Planning Commission okay. until January. Okay. Because once you get this done, you can't get this done until December 9th at the earliest, and the Planning Commission won't have, they will have already had the December meeting. But that won't hurt our deadlines. Our deadlines is to have right. the declaration. Your deadline is to have the declaratory Define. resolution and economic development plan passed. Okay. Then it can go to the Planning Commission in January. Okay, so if we do this tonight, mm -hmm. we're good. Yes, as long as it doesn't cause great complicated problems coming up, coming up with what I need to this, prepare to. This is from Bynum Faneuil J, the art survey. Okay, he, he, he did these, okay, and I'll, I'll call him tomorrow and make him change them. <laughs> 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 well, he'll just add on to it. Okay. Do no, I, I, any other discussion? I, I feel good about that because that, that's part of why I wanted to see these maps. Mm -hmm. 
was to try and, and, and be kind of foresightful as far as what we could do, you know, with the whole area, not just. But I, I do understand the idea of just doing a small area and getting it started so we have a base to start with. But it sounds like they can incorporate yeah. what we talked about. It's a win-win. Mm -hmm. I have no further comments. The public might, but I don't. Um, do we have any public comment on the discussions we just had or the changes, modifications, or any thoughts or concerns? Okay. Good. Did we make Commissioner a comments? Do we need to make a formal motion on this then? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll make a formal motion to establish the TIF districts. Can I say as discussed, or do we need to say all the I would say boundaries? West side <laughs> as discussed. For the west side TIF district. As shown on the map. As shown on the map. For the downtown district as discussed and as the boundaries were described by Michael Farmer. And for the downtown TIF district as discussed and as the boundaries were discussed by town manager Michael Farmer. <clears throat> you need to vote, vote, or aye. Yeah, I was ice. getting ready. I just wanted okay. to, after the book at a space, just give me a second. <laughs> William Ellis? Yes. Tom Corman? Yes. Dr. Hash? Yes. Carl Thurman? Yes. Trevor Saber? Yes. The motion passes. Okay. I think this is a big step in town history, kind of. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So. Anybody got champagne? <laughs> if I might, so I think moving forward, the discussion ought to start being about, you know, what the idea of the RDC is for these areas, you know, ideas, improvements, sidewalks are easy, projects, projects. I, you know, I have a list, I'd really like at your leisure that we take the famous pickup truck ride. And we go around and we really flesh it out because, you know, seeing is easier than having a map or anything. But I have a long list of things that I think need to be included in the improvements. And, and, and I think the overall goal not only just affects the TIF areas, but indirectly will fit, affect, say, Sale Street in the future. For, for example, since we have time. Um, I think that um, Flatwoods, the intersection of Flatwoods and 46, down Flatwoods, along Starnes, and back down Reeves Road to the school, I think we're going to have to, I, I know we're going to have to improve um, the roadway infrastructure. Mm -hmm. When we improve it, there'll probably be storm work to be done. There'll be um, maybe a trail to long, go alongside it for pedestrians. And... Um, the plans, as well as the project itself, the engineering plans can be paid for by TIF. And I think long range planning for our town, it's important that we develop that secondary infrastructure, road infrastructure to the schools with that and the addition of the Sycamore connection that goes out to 46 through the Harmon project um, will allow us to somewhere down the road be planning to uh, do a large project that would improve Sales Street from 46 all the way up to the, uh, the school. You can imagine that'll all be town all the way to Starnes Road sooner or later. It'll either be residential, school, or commercial, and that at some point we'll want a boulevard. We'll want, we'll want to do something that will be expensive and, and we'll close down that area for some time, so I think it's important to have that secondary build out, which is perfect because it's just a blank canvas now, uh, have that build out to the school. So once we decide to do something, a large, a large project from Sales Street and 46 up to the school or Loudon Road, whatever you want to say, then we'll be able to have that and not disrupt the school campus. Mm -hmm. It won't be as painful at that point. No. And traffic right. and, yeah. yeah. And Mike, the RDC can Bond for that money, correct? To do that. Uh, well, now you're talking about stuff. I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I think so. I, I think, and 
anybody can not to maintain it, but yeah. the initial but building. but but that's how we will do some of the projects because the money will slowly like a better word pile up right. uh, and, and 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 accumulate and and so um, when we have a steady amount coming in, then we can bond and make payments on it right. as opposed to having you know wait till we have two million dollars to do a two million dollar project. We need to at least wait till we have enough to pay a two million dollar bond off. It's not unlike what we do now. So, right. I mean that for me that's the future kind of um, st strategy. Well, ground already broken on Harmon Farms. We you know we have some a glimpse of what the future is going to be there, which is good. Uh, but I and mean, one of the things the residents would definitely love to see is some of that infrastructure in before everything is built up and 46 becomes gridlocked. And, but I think we can do that as soon as we got some picture of what the bond would look like or, or what the value is going to be that we can bond for. Am I wrong on that? No, I mean, we all of a sudden are going to have a building boom and old Chinese proverb is the best time to plant a cherry tree is 20 years ago second best time is now so we're net we're planting our cherry tree now but I, I think we can alleviate some of the pa growing pains as we go but we're going to have growing pains because it's always going to kind of be in right. front of us moving away from us so it's, it's well we don't want to do it in some places um some municipalities not not really the tip but have all these big things go in and then they say okay now we're going to build the infrastructure a year or two later and then it disrupts. So yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're ahead of the curve on that as well. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you're lucky and sometimes you're good. And I think the fact that this property is developing on the west side and allows for us to maybe take advantage of building up the road infrastructure to back to the school, that would finally, I just don't know how you would ever um, close down Sale Street for, you know, a lot, you know, say even 18 months. Right. And, and uh, it'd just be crazy if, if we didn't have this opportunity. I so agree. problems, opportunities. All right, um, is commissioner comments? All right, we've talked enough for three people today, so I'm good. Okay. Um, I think with that all said, uh, I think we're good to adjourn with our West Side uh, TIF agreed as directed or as outlined in the uh, downtown, what you call it, waterfront? Uh, uh, River District, right? River District, yeah. with the additional change from Mike Farmer. I would do ask if just if there's any public comment now on the agenda. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Any public comment on the today's agenda or the next agenda? Not on today's agenda. Like if they wanted to talk about something unrelated. Any unrelated discussion today from the floor would uh, is open. And I appreciate you being understanding. This is kind of new for me, but I'll do my best to make sure you're all always included. None? All right, with that. Being said, the uh, meeting is adjourned, adjourned for Monday, November 25th, 2024. Good job. All right. Great job. Sorry about your coffee.